All right. In the uh, in the last lesson, we built a finger, and there it is. We can uh, can look at it and decide if we like it or not. It looks a little bit chubby on the end there, so let's bring that down maybe. There we go. So it's it's <laughs> it's uh, an interesting finger. Okay. So um, we need four of these. So what we're going to do now is um, let's just get rid of this guy. Because you have a lot of recreation every time one of these things has to draw. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sub. Th these are subroutines. These are integrated circuits. I'm going to create this whole thing as another subroutine so that I can just grab it four times to get four fingers. All right, so to make this into a, a subroutine, all we have to do is um, remove the, the things we want to be inputs and outputs, if any. And so I can get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Probably should have done that one first. That would have made it faster. Okay, so let's get some input pins. So this is the size again. And we need another one for the angle. Now I've I've hooked the angles all together. So this finger this finger doesn't do any fancy tricks about, you know, um, moving um, uh, each knuckle separately, but I think you'll find that f for most of it we're, we're we're pretty good. And we can always come back and, and wire these all up separately. Um, but you know, let's keep it simple. And so now we need a uh, uh, a third input input pin for the uh, matrix. All right. Now we could. We could output this matrix. This is the tip of the finger. If we were going to put fingernails on it or something like that, you know, we could we could hook there. But we don't really need that yet. So now, I've created this new new integrated circuit, and let me let me save it with a new name. So I say save as, and let's say um, the other one's called joint IC. So let's call this guy finger IC. Finger IC. Okay, so now what should happen, we can get rid of, we can close this whole thing now. So now what should happen is when I go over here to um, open my integrated circuits, there should be a new one listed. So there's the joint we built last time. And there's the, uh, there's the finger I see. And here it is. So let's, uh, let's make four of them. I see we've lost our... Uh, 3D view because we closed that other window, so we need to get a new one. So here's our 3D view back again, and that's about right. Okay, so there, here are our four fingers. So we need a matrix to get started. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to 3D tools, reference, and this will be the matrix that starts it. Now, the the angles and sizes of all these can be ganged together. Maybe we should do that first. Um, let's get a single. You know, I'm going to close the 3D view because it's slowing me down. Okay, so we're going to get a single um, setting for the size of all of these fingers. They're all going to be the same size. Now, a real hand would have some fingers a little bit larger than others, but let's just make a mechanical hand that has everybody the same. And. We're also going to make all of our fingers bend together. And again, these could be all separate. You could have programs that do different kinds of hand motions. You know, move one finger at a time. Okay, so that was fairly simple. So that'll get us the hand that has fingers that are the same size and bend together. But the next tricky thing is we need to set this up so that the fingers are positioned in different, I mean, they, they start at different points. So to do that, I need the, um, the 3D tool that does translate. So I just happen to know that if I hook a translate to there and hook that to there and then translate it again, it's going to get a little messy in a second here, and then translate it again. Okay, here's where it's messy. Okay, I guess I could clean these up a little bit, but why? So now each of these Y's is going to be a different value. So this is going to be the separation between the fingers. 
and let's just copy that and let's see what this should be maybe I don't know 50 or 60 we'll get to see what it is okay let's bring the 3d view back so I can uh, working in the dark here oh I see fingers already so there we go there's our there's our four fingers it's a little bit too large, so I should be able to change all their sizes right here. Give it enough time. Computer's really sweating to get this all done for me. See, because it's recreating everything. When this, when you, when you move in this view, things are pretty fast because it's just um, uh, the high-speed uh, rotations of things and and. Uh, but but when you when you touch any of these things, it has to recreate everything. Oh boy, now we're in trouble. I was still hooked to that. My my cursor was still hooked to this control, and it's going to be like 150 or something now when it comes up. Let's wait till it finishes. Or maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to click away here. Let me just click. And hopefully, I'm not dragging it anymore. And I'm going to set this to. I'm going to set this to 66. That's a good number to be. Get it to redraw one time for me. Okay. So there's our hand. It's 66 in size. And it finishes drawing each of the pieces, recreating them. There we go. Oh, now we're still in trouble. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Don't you love computers? <clears throat> okay, so let's try to bend this thing. So this should be the, oh, this is the separation. I guess I guessed correctly at the separation. If I change that, they, they'll get further apart or closer together, but I, I had a good guess at 50. And so here's the angle now we're gonna bend this. You can see the individual fingers bending. And let's take a look at it this way. So there's our hand. Now, if we just had a palm in there and a thumb, 